After learning more about homelessness in rural areas, everybody calls it the hidden homeless or the invisible homeless. Um, Cause like downtown St. Paul, I drive past a homeless shelter when I go down there and you can, you know, see all the people outside. In this kind of area, in a rural area, you might see somebody in a tent somewhere out in the woods. You might just think they're camping you know, they're taking a weekend camping trip, but they could easily be a homeless person not knowing where to go, and that's all they have. So what I would tell somebody who doesn't know a lot about homelessness would be that these folks are our families, our brothers, sisters, mothers, grandparents, um, mm -hmm. and they are they're struggling with something right now, and they need our support. The biggest misconceptions about homelessness would be that some people believe that someone's automatically mentally ill or struggling with addictions when all it takes is one paycheck and you could be homeless. It's really not that far away. I myself, I lived in a camper in the middle of a field. So I wasn't used to being around people. Uh, it made it very hard to get the things that I needed. I was sleeping in my car. I was um, driving and parking at field entrances. And I was sleeping there overnight. Once I was out of housing, I just felt like there was, I was done. I was living on a bus or on the train down in the cities and that was just it. Like, I thought that was it. I thought I would never in my life have another place to live. Imagine everybody in the world looking at you different, like you're less, like you don't have the ability to take care of yourself or whatever that looks like. And I think everybody can imagine that because they've all felt that way at some point. But knowing for a fact that this is the way somebody's feeling like how can you even like get through life how do you get a job that way right like you're gonna get up in the morning from the park bench and go to work that's not realistic When someone comes here for the very first time, I think about how I would feel walking through the doors. Um, I, I would feel really kind of nervous in a new place like this and maybe like an institutional setting. And so my goal is to give someone a safe place to kind of land. And so when they come in, um, we try to do as little as possible to get them into their space. And so like less questions, less things like that, but really to focus on letting them just have this safe place and, and settle in. Everyone was so incredibly kind. They knew I was scared. They knew, they knew a lot more than I thought they knew. They knew I was scared. They knew I didn't want to be there. They knew. They knew. They treat you as an individual. It made me feel warm. I didn't have to worry about anything. They pretty much took the worry away. They really made me feel comfortable that there's not gonna be any issues. They're gonna help me all, all the whole way. That, that's what they're gonna do. They're gonna genuinely wanna help me. And they're gonna be there until the end, to like find a place, you know? It, it was important for a place for you to renovate its living quarters because we needed more beds. We're always full, and so being able to support more people was very important. 
Um, we were able to update a lot of the features of the shelter. So we had carpet before, it was really hard to clean. And so now we have tile and things like that. Um, during COVID, we struggled with uh, preparing meals for people because we didn't have a licensed kitchen. And so one of the big changes with our retrofit was the kitchen and, and cooking food for people. Um, we were able to get more office spaces to support the staff better have nicer, nicer furnishings and things like that. I think one of the big things is that we do allow people to stay for an extended amount of time. Um, again, kind of like a difference in the cities, a lot of their shelters are just overnight. You go, you sleep, you leave. Um, here we have the resources, the resources that we have to help people um, for an extended amount of time and then even after they leave we're still able to keep in contact with them and help them find whatever resources they might need. So the rental assistance program we offer assistance for up to two years and what's really nice about it is we can take people that we've been serving through the shelter program and move them into a place and support them while they stabilize in their own place and they take on after we let them go. I think the most satisfying part of my job is when we actually see success with one of the residents here. Uh, when we're able to get them into housing and into a comfortable situation uh, compared to what they were before in and beforehand. Uh, seeing the joy on their face when they first walk into that apartment uh, and it's all theirs. I know at times I run into certain former residents while I'm, you know, going through town and, you know, just seeing them, you know, living life, having smiles on their faces. You know, knowing that, you know, they're in hopefully a better spot than they were, you know, definitely makes me feel pretty good. Uh, the connection with the staff was amazing. Um, and the resources that they were able to provide to me that I know now today, and um, I didn't know before. They did not just help me find a house. They helped me find a life. We're just here to support our community, and we want everyone to know that we're here to support anyone in need and that's what we do. The reason I come to work every day is because I know how important it is and I know what it means to the folks that live here. I've experienced trauma in my life and I can connect with other people because I know they have too and if I can take some of that away from them and give them the ability to succeed. That's absolutely what I want to do. And it's the only place I want to be in that.